It's been a really tough year. Uh, a year ago past yesterday, Ireland was placed on its uh, first full lockdown. All essential journey was banned, except for things like essential work, food shopping, healthcare, and exercise within two kilometers of our homes. And at the time, we were told that that was going to last for at least the next two weeks. But now, a year later, we're on our third lockdown, at least until Monday week, but probably a little bit longer than that. And so it wouldn't be surprising if after a year of social distancing and isolation and loneliness and worry and illness and loss, our hearts were heavy. And we really don't, didn't feel like rejoicing or praising God this Palm Sunday morning. But things were really tough on the very first Palm Sunday too. The nation of Israel wasn't doing well. Their leaders were selfish and corrupt. Their religion was, was uh, tainted by hypocrisy and legalism. And they were under the control of an oppressive and brutal Roman Empire. And yet on that first Palm Sunday, that was a day of incredible celebration and enthusiastic praise. Crowds of people were singing and shouting in joy to God. Now, of course, some people misunderstood what it was all about. Some people were just getting, you know, they were just going with the flow. They were just getting caught up in the moment. But this was an event that had to be celebrated. It was an event that needed to lead to people to, to praise the Lord. And I think it can teach us reasons why today, despite all that we're facing, despite all of the situations and struggles and restrictions and all of that stuff, today still should be a day of praise. So we're going to read a... Uh, from Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 down to verse 17 this morning. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her called by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says... Anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king's come, king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is, the, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money chargers, the changers, and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robber, robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of the children and infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Palm Sunday was a, a noisy day of celebration. With her cloaks and palms on the road, people shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name 
of the Lord. And that even spilled out onto the next day. As Mark records that clearing of the temple that Matthew records, he, he records it on the Monday rather than on the Sunday. That day the temple was filled with the voices of children shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, of course, there are many ways that we can express our worship to the Lord. Our worship can be quiet and reflective. Sometimes God just takes our breath away and we want to just sit or stand in awe. And of course, we're called to, to live out our whole lives as worship wherever we are, whatever we're doing. But we're also called to be people who enthusiastically praise our God. It's something that is emphasized again and again throughout the Psalms that we're reading over these 150 days. So Psalm 31, 33 says this, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. So this is our calling. This is God's purpose for our lives. We are his worship team. We are those who have been chosen to praise him. As Peter says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, uh, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Of course, not everybody is happy when we do this. On Palm Sunday, the Pharisees criticized and condemned the disciples for their praise. Teacher, rebuke your disciples, they said to Jesus. And on Monday, the chief priests and the teacher of the law were furious with the kids, praising God and, simply, and, and asked Jesus angrily, do you hear what these children are saying? But Jesus defended these kids. By quoting from Psalm 8, have you never read, he said, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Jesus was delighted with these kids. Their praise pleased him. He knew that they were doing exactly what God wanted them to do. He knew that God was pleased with their praise. Way back in the Old Testament, maybe you remember that King David enthusiastically worshipped God when the Ark of the Covenant was brought into Jerusalem. But when his wife criticised him for what she thought was vulgar behaviour, David replied, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. His worship and his praise was directed to God. He knew that God was pleased with it. And that was all that mattered to him. In a sense, it didn't matter what his wife thought of it. He wanted just to praise God with everything he was and had. And that's why we should joyfully praise God this morning. It brings God pleasure. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 13 says. It says this, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Other people might not like it. They might ridicule us for singing enthusiastically, even in our own homes this morning. They might think that we're just getting carried away with all of this. But our focus should not be on what other people think. Instead, it should be on what the Lord thinks. He has called us to do this. It is for him. And it brings him pleasure. But amazingly, it also brings us pleasure. 
These kids in that temple, they didn't have to be told to praise God that day. It was just an expression of the excitement and enthusiasm that was in their hearts. And on Palm Sunday, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices, Luke says in chapter 19. So praising God is not a heavy responsibility. It's not an onerous task. It's not just something that we do. It's also something that we're supposed to enjoy. We're called to worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. This is what C.S. Lewis said. He said, the act of praising implies the closest fellowship with the one who is being praised. Therefore, praise is not merely expresses, but completes the enjoyment. In commanding us to glorify him, God is inviting us to enjoy him. So if you're into sport, then watching your team naturally spills out into praise. And if you're told that you can't cheer or you can't celebrate their win, then it wastes the experience. The act of praising not only expresses our joy in them, but it completes and increases our joy. And it's the same with praising God. It's in praising him that we enter into his intimate presence. Our minds are filled with thoughts of his glory. And our hearts burst with joy in the Lord. So this morning, folks, it's not so much that we're commanded to praise. It's that we're invited to rejoice in God. It's an invitation to enjoy him, an invitation to rejoice in the Lord always. So today should be a day of praise because it's God's purpose for us and it brings pleasure to God and to us. But Palm Sunday also gives us many reasons why we should praise God. It reminds us, for example, that God keeps his promises. For hundreds of years, God had been promising the, that the, the Messiah, his anointed king, would come. About 500 years before this event on Palm Sunday, Zechariah had written this. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. And on that day, that first Palm Sunday, this prophecy was fulfilled. God had kept his promise. He had sent his king. God's Messiah had arrived. God had shown again that he is faithful. Now, of course, we are not like that, are we? We are not completely trustworthy. The people of, of Jerusalem, they demonstrated that so clearly on Palm Sunday. They rejoiced when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on the Sunday. But by Friday, they'd rejected him. On Sunday, they wanted to crown him. But on Friday, they wanted to crucify him. But God is not like that. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and then not fulfill? God keeps his promises. 
So we can praise God this morning that God is faithful to all of his promises. And Jesus is the fulfillment of every single one of them. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says this. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Jesus is the yes to all of God's promises. Through him and his sacrificial death on the cross, God has done what he said he would do. And so if we have put our trust in Jesus, if we are in Christ this morning, then all of God's promises are ours. We have been forgiven of all of our sins. We have been declared righteous in God's sight. We have been reconciled to God. We have been adopted as God's children. We have been sealed by the Holy Spirit who permanently lives in us. We have been given eternal life and we have been guaranteed a home in heaven. And so folks, no matter what is happening in our lives, no matter how we feel or what struggles or suffering we're going through, no matter how bad the situation is all around us, we can rejoice because we've been blessed because God has promised it and God is faithful. So with Paul, we can declare, as he says in Ephesians chapter 1, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. This morning, we can celebrate because God keeps his promises. We are blessed this morning. So Palm Sunday encourages us to praise God because it demonstrates to us again that God keeps his promises. But it also reminds us that God values prayer. This is why Jesus cleared the temple in Jerusalem. He said, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The temple in Jerusalem was supposed to be a place of prayer, a place of communion and communication with God. But instead, people had turned it into a place of exploitation. You could only sacrifice animals that had been bought in the temple precinct, the core of the Gentiles, as it was called. And temple tax, that had to be paid by all the worshippers, but it had to be paid in the temple currency. So people had to exchange their foreign money for that currency. But people took advantage of this opportunity to scam people out of their money. Those animals for sacrifice were outrageously overpriced. And the, the commission on exchanging money was something like 50%. So instead of a place where people from all different nations could come and connect with the one true God and praise his name, the temple had been turned into a dishonest marketplace where God's name was was dishonored for selfish and materialistic reasons. And so Jesus drove them out. Verse 12, he said, Or he did, he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. Jesus desperately wanted people to be able to meet with God with no distractions and no barriers in the way. And in fact, that's why Jesus died. He died to give us this privilege. Isaiah 59 and 2 says this, your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Our rebellion against God meant that we could not come into God's presence. 
We could not approach him. But Jesus went to the cross to pay that price, to remove that barrier, to give us the privilege and the right to come right into the intimate presence of God. Christ died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. And so today, folks, we don't need to go into a temple, a sacred building with an altar and a priest and a sacrifice. Instead, Jesus is our temple. He is our meeting place between us and God. He has provided the way so that we can come near to God and praise his name and pour out our hearts to him in prayer. And he has promised that he will answer those prayers. The next day of the week, uh, after, after clearing the temple, Jesus taught his disciples, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. What an amazing encouragement for us to bring our prayers and requests to God in faith. But of course, that does not mean that we'll always get everything that we want. Thankfully, God wants to do something far better than that. And Palm Sunday shows that to us. Because Jesus didn't come into Jerusalem that day to be the Messiah that the, the, the nation of Israel wanted. Instead, Jesus came into Jerusalem that day to be the Messiah that they needed. They were looking for a powerful king to free them from the oppression of the Romans and bring peace and prosperity to their nation. That's why they cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. As it says in verse 8 of our reading, palm branches, they were a nationalistic symbol of Judea. It expressed their political ambitions. That's probably also why they shouted Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna is a cry to go out to God to, to save us. So they were crying to God to deliver their nation from oppression. But instead, Jesus came to do something far better than that. He came gentle and riding on a donkey. Not as a military leader to defeat the Romans and establish an earthly empire. But instead he came as a suffering saviour to defeat sin and death and bring us into a heavenly kingdom. And through prayer, God is still committed to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. Someone has said this, that God doesn't always give us what we ask for in prayer. Instead, he gives us what we would have asked for if we know what he knows. If we had his perspective, if we had his wisdom, his knowledge, if we could see things as clearly as he does, then we would understand why he is answering our prayers the way he does. So we pray as Jesus did in the Garden of, Garden of Gethsemane. Yes, we pour our hearts to God and ask for what we want, for whatever we think we need. But we also pray, yet not as I will, but as you will. Not because we're kind of submitting to a, a lesser answer to prayer, but because we know what, the, what God wants to do in our lives is far better than what we could ask for. But of course, that doesn't take away from the power that God promises to work in through our prayers. And that's the, the, the last reason I want us to see for why we should be praising God this morning. It is that God works in power. After Jesus had cleared the temple, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. 
It was another miraculous demonstration of God's power. And the only possible response to this was praise. Luke records that on Palm Sunday, the disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. They just were blown away by all the amazing things that God, that Jesus had, been, had done. And they just burst out into praise because of it. And we too can praise God for all of his amazing works of power. Psalm 98 verse 1, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. How could we not be people of praise when we think of all the amazing things that he has done in our lives? But these miracles in the temple that day pointed to the greater work of Christ that was to come. The blame and the lay. The blind and the lame were forbidden from offering a sacrifice or entering into the very heart of the temple. They were restricted to the, the court of the Gentiles where all that corruption was going on. But these people who were excluded from the temple came face to face with the Son of God. And in power, he restored them not just to physical health, but he removed the barrier that kept them from coming close to God. And when Jesus died on the cross, this is what he did. That became a reality for every single one of us. Remember at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. That barrier into the most holy place in the temple, it was, it was torn, it was destroyed. Be declaring that the way to God was now open. And so today, we can praise God because of his victory on the cross. So we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain. Hebrews 10 says. So folks, yes, it has been a really tough year. And we will continue to face difficult times in, in, in the months and years ahead, even after this pandemic is over. But today and every day is a good day to praise our God. It is God's purpose in our lives. It brings pleasure to God and to us. And we can praise God because God keeps all of his promises. And God values prayer. And God works in power in our lives. To bring us to himself. And to enable us to live with him and for him. Let's pray. Father God, we really thank you. We really thank you that we have so many reasons to praise you this morning. So many reasons to celebrate your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your work in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this, this Palm Sunday as we look back to that original Palm Sunday when Jesus rode into Jerusalem as the king, as the gentle king, as the righteous king, as the king who would bring salvation to his people. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you that he is king of our, of our lives and that because of that, we can rejoice in him this morning. We can rejoice that, that you have kept all of your promises, that every promise that you have given us is yes in Christ, that we have been blessed in it with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Lord, it just blows our minds to think that all of those, those blessings are ours this morning. And thank you that we can come into your presence, Lord, because of Jesus. We can come and we can pour our hearts to you. And we can come with that confidence that you will answer our prayers in a way that's even better than how we ask them, Lord. 
in accordance with your will and your purpose and your power, which is far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And Father, thank you that you have worked in amazing ways in our lives to bring us to yourself, to bring us to this point of, of connecting with you. But Lord, so bring us to this, this reality that we are your children, that we are safe in your hands and you, you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, but you will help us. You will give us the strength and the security to get through each day, Lord that you are our refuge, you are our strong tower, you are our, 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 our father that we can run to and that we can rest in. Father, we just thank you and we just praise you for all that you are and all that you have done in our lives. Lord, help us not to get distracted from this. Help us, Lord, not to get uh, distracted from, by all the, the tough things that are happening in our lives, Lord. Help us to be people who will always praise you because no matter how tough it is, you are worth praising. And you, what you have done is just amazing in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.